We now move to the next unit of the course, moving from consumers' behavior to the behavior of firms. How does the stuff consumers buy get made in the first place? For this course, we can simply view the firm as a giant black box, where inputs go in and outputs come out. Inputs are the things that firms use to make stuff. These might include raw materials, machinery, land, and workers. Outputs are whatever the firm is making, cars or toys or sandwiches or iPhones. Just as we simplified our model of consumer choice by limiting the choice to two goods, pizza and cookies, for example, we'll simplify our production model by focusing on just two inputs, labor and capital. Labor captures the number of workers involved in production. Capital captures all the physical objects necessary for production, the machinery and factories and land that might be necessary for the firm to make its product. Just like utility function, described how different mixes of goods could be translated into happiness for the consumer. A production function describes how different mixes of inputs can be translated into outputs for the firm. Like all models in economics, production functions take a process that can be incredibly complicated, manufacturing an iPhone, for example, and condense it into something simpler. An iPhone is made of hundreds of components, sourced from dozens of companies and millions of employees around the world. Yet a production function might condense all this into two inputs, labor and capital. Even with such a dramatic simplification, production functions can be a powerful tool for understanding the behavior of firms in the real world. At their core, production functions capture what is technologically feasible for firms to produce with a given level of inputs. Let's take a look at an example of a made-up production function for the fictitious golden snitch from the world of Harry Potter. This table shows the number of snitches that can be produced with a given amount of labor or number of workers and capital or number of snitch making machines. With one worker and one machine, we can make two snitches. And you can see that as we add more workers and more machines, the number of snitches we can make increases. This should look very familiar, just like the utility tables we've seen before, but now with production inputs. Indeed, many of the tricks we learned when studying utility maximization will come in handy here as well. But figuring out the optimal production for firms involves one factor that makes it a bit more complicated than maximizing utility for consumers, the time frame. In particular, when we work with production functions, we need to differentiate between the short run and the long run. In the short run, capital is a fixed input. Firms are stuck with their machinery, their factories, and their land. They can't easily sell these parts of their operation or buy new ones. The pizzeria downtown can't just knock out a wall of the kitchen to make room for a new brick oven. The pizzeria may need to purchase the neighboring store to make room for such an expansion. And changes like this take time. They can't be done in the short run. In the short run, labor is a variable input. Firms can bring on new workers or let old workers go. So the pizzeria can't order that new brick oven but it could hire a couple of extra cooks for the summer. Bottom line, in the short run, firms can adjust labor, but not capital. On the other hand, in the long run, firms can change both labor and capital. With a longer time frame, a firm would have time to invest in a new factory or sell an old piece of machinery. The pizzeria can buy out the store next door, knock down the wall between them, and install that new brick oven and certainly can still change the number of workers and employees. In the long run, all inputs are variable. So how long is the short run? And when does it become the long run? Good question. What is considered short run and long run varies depending on the context and the specific production function we're talking about. Just remember that in the long run, all inputs are variable and firms can adjust the level of any input. In the short run, at least one of the inputs is fixed and cannot be changed by the firm.